All right, hold on to your hats. This one's gonna get hectic. The different kinds of light we have with your incandescent, your light that makes heat, light bulbs, fire, such, and then your luminescence, light that isn't making heat, essentially. Now, an example of one of these is is a classic, the humble highlighter, a fluorescent, which is caused by an electron going up an energy level sending off a photon when it's energized by light that's why uv light like black light makes it really bright but that needs light to work you see so that's not our guy that's not glow in the dark what we're after is like these things everyone loves these things now what's going on here they call phosphorescence which is kind of the same deal but it just means it releases photons over a period of time because the light energizes it and it kind of stores it and slowly releases it now these two are called photoluminescence so phosphorescence and fluorescence are types of photoluminescence which are obviously luminescence because there are multiple different types of luminescence like i just showed you how the stars you stick on your ceiling work and how your highlighter works but your glow sticks that's a different story that's chemiluminescence and then you got your natural ones of bioluminescence like your fireflies and now that we're here Let's have a little chat about the radioluminescence. And what would be the key thing that makes anything that falls in this category luminescent? You guessed it, it's radioactive. A good example of something is antique watches. And one element capable of this is radium, the 88 element on the periodic table, discovered on the 21st of December 1896 by Marie and Pierre Curie. Marie went on to be the first female Nobel Prize winner in 1906. In 1911 became the first person ever to receive two Nobel Prizes. 1904 they were doing all sorts of crazy shit so the radium craze kicked off. They put in everything so that helped cause the price to skyrocket because the demand could not keep up with the production. 1914, World War One kicking off, and that's how you get yourself factories full of women painting clocks with glow-in-the-dark paint so soldiers can see the time at night. All right, see how much of this you can see similar things going on today. Like a hundred years later, see if anything rings a bell. The company that made the paint Undark, US Radium, their owners and scientists knew how dangerous it was by 1917. And they were telling the women to point the brushes in their mouths with their lips and they would paint their nails and their teeth and they were told it was harmless. Doctors begun to suspect that this one woman, Grace Fryer, her condition w was related to her employment with US Radium. And then they have a specialist come in and pronounce it to be in fine health. And that specialist was a company executive. A Harvard professor did a report on the working conditions and it was a detailed report explaining the catastrophically dangerous working conditions and virtually every factory employee suffered serious blood or bone conditions. The report was filed with the New Jersey Department of Labor and most of it omitted and it claimed every girl was in perfect condition. Reports of illnesses kept coming in so the company went around saying they had syphilis. In 1927, attorney Raymond Berry files a lawsuit on behalf of Grace Fryer and four other dial painters seeking 200 and $50,000 a piece and that's when the newspaper dubbed them the Radium Girls. Bodies of women that have already passed away were dug up and their bones tested and they were still radioactive. The health of the women just rapidly deteriorated and in the first court appearance in January to 1928, none of them could raise their arm to take the oath. Some were unable to walk, unable to hold themselves up. They were too sick to attend the next hearing in April, so the judge ordered a continuation to September, an accommodation to several company witnesses that were summering, aka holidaying in Europe. That really pissed off the public. But what do you know? The judge that was given this case happened to have stocks in US writing him himself. What are the chances? So I think they settled outside of court after putting it off for so long, waiting for the women to die off, giving them $10,000 a piece, I think. All right, a hundred odd years later, 
let's see how we've done. Have we gotten much better? Because this is really a perfect story. Let's see, we've got workers' rights, human rights, people working in factories. All right, and to keep it kind of on an even playing field, we'll just go, since this happened in America, we'll go by America. Looking after your factory workers. Mm. Amazon, I'm looking at you. How about the dangerous substance, harmful ingredient? in something people are using. Monsanto, the dodgy judges, the elite ruling class, all doing favors for each other. That's still a thing. Character assassination of the victim. Oh, yep, oh yeah. And this is comparing America then and now. These women mainly needed to go through with this lawsuit because they needed money for the medical bills. And uh, it might not be, you know, to the level of getting a tooth pulled and having a bit of your jaw come with it because it's just all hollowed away. But your healthcare is still pretty fucked up. All right, now what have we learned? We learned about different kinds of light, luminescence. Learn about fluorescence and glow in the dark things. Learn how soldiers told the time at night back in the day. Learn that corporations have always been shitty, probably always will be shitty. That's probably why you need to keep them in check and regulate them and the things they use. And uh, yeah, I guess what can we take away from this glow in the dark video? Uh, if capitalism has its way, it doesn't just want you dead, it wants your jaw removed via radioactive poisoning. Like, subscribe, bet you didn't see that one coming.